Check out FlipSideGaming.com for all your gaming needs. Use the promo code HEROES to save 10% on all orders over $10 and support the channel at the same time. Hey there, this is John from Heroes and the Legends, and welcome to another edition of the Magic the Gathering Market Watch. And this should be a time of year where things are peaceful, things are quiet, a lot of the legacy buyouts were slowing down, a lot of the standard cards were starting to stabilize due to the fact that Rivals will be coming out in a few weeks and everyone's just kind of waiting to see what's going to happen with that new set before they decide to invest in any other plans or strategies for decks. So everything was going to be peaceful. We were going to have a really quiet holiday season, maybe play some cube, some commander, just relax, have a good time, not worry about crazy spikes going on in the market or anything really turbulent happening. Well, just when you thought it was safe, guess what? There's going to be something that throws a wrench in that. This time it is the Commander Rules Announcement. This happened yesterday. I did a video on it. I'll link it at the end. So if you need all the details, if you haven't heard them yet, you can find them there. But long story short, the announcement came from the Commander's Rules Committee saying that through January 15th, Silver Border cards will be legal in Commander. There is a ban list, but for the most part, Silver Border cards are legal. So, you could imagine what happened after that point. A lot of big spikes happening in the world of Silver Border. So we will be taking a look at some hot Silver Border cards at the end of this video. We're also going to look at all things Standard, Modern, and Legacy, as we always do. Now, quickly before we get started, just a really fast reminder. If you check out the description below, you'll find a few ways to support us. You'll find some links to products on Amazon, as well as Flipside Gaming. And they have a promo code at Flipside Gaming, of course, for our viewers. Maybe save yourself some cash, support the channel at the same time. You'll also find our Patreon page below as well. With that out of the way, let's get into it. We're going to start off, as we always do, with Standard. And the top five cards of lost value this week. So maybe no surprises here. These are some of the high-ticket cards. All of them still seeing substantial Standard play. It's just a lot of the players have their copies. There's a lot of copies in circulation. And with the new meta coming, no one's really investing into anything new right now, especially more expensive cards. So let's see what we got with number five. Hostage Shaker down 92 cents to 834. So this card, now well below $10, continues to drop. A couple of reasons for that. I mean, the first one being the most obvious, a lot of packs of Ixalan have been open. Print runs of Magic nowadays are extremely high. Rares are out there in circulation in great abundance. So players that want the card at this point have had their chance and opportunity to pick it up. And now more copies are still entering the marketplace. Value goes down. Secondly, over the course of the meta, a lot of players kind of realize that maybe just cramming four of these into a deck isn't always the best idea. It's a great card. Don't get me wrong. It's not going anywhere. This will still see standard play probably as long as it's legal, honestly. But if you don't have the extra mana to back up the initial play and this card's destroyed, it becomes an expensive tempo play, which isn't always going to be good for you. But if you have the mana, obviously this card is great. But for those reasons, this is going to continue to trickle down over time. Number four, Angel of Invention, down a dollar to $10. There's a lot of copies of this one out there too, but this is played in the God Pharaoh's Gift decks as well as the Monument decks, which are surging back a little bit too. So this is a card to watch down the road in the future, but again, does have a high price point, I think, still, considering the amount of play it sees versus the amount of copies out there. Number three, Vrasco Relic Seeker, down $1.30 to $17. So again, another card that's doing really well, seeing a lot of play, great in energy builds. Now, the Obson Token decks that we saw this card in starting to subside a little bit. You're seeing less of them in the field, so that's going to hurt value at least slightly here. But also, again, an Ixalan card with a lot of packs being open. That's the main reason you're seeing this drop. Number two, Gideon of the Trials, down $1.62 to $11.74. What can I say about Gideon I haven't said in previous episodes? So long story short, in case you're not aware of the story, card had a lot of hype going into the release of Ixalan due to the Planeswalker legendary rules change. So some people thought, well, maybe this card will have a big impact on Standard or even Modern. It didn't quite get there. But the card's not a bad card. It's he's playing control decks and not only standard, but also modern and even a little sometimes in legacy. So card is seeing play. The quantities of the card seeing play, though, is in super abundant. And you take that into account with the inflated price point. This continues to spiral down. I think a more fair price for this card is probably $8, $10. So I do think this will continue to go down. Number one, the Scarab God, down $1.73 to $38.15. Great card for energy decks, among others. Why is this sliding as aggressively as it is? Well, simply because there's just such a huge supply right now. I mean, these recent Magic sets get printed into oblivion, so even the Mythics are going to have a hard time holding a price point 
even when they are seeing tons of play in the standard format like this one is, this is also a great commander card, so there's definitely some cross appeal there too. Now because of that, the card has maintained value for a while, but again, here we are now slowly closing into the mid-30s. This will continue to slide just again due to its availability. Alright, let's move into the top five standard cards that have gained value this week, and I'm going to warn you right off the bat, very, very, very conservative gains here. A lot of the cards we're going to talk about today probably could have almost been anything. Number five, Maverin Fine, Dusk Apostle, up six cents to $1.30, second week in the row that Marvin has been at number five, so he's creeping up a little bit, a very little bit, but the card does he play in the Mono White Vampire decks, which haven't put up a lot of great results necessarily, but are popular. You see them sometimes in Friday Night Magic. Also, the card is inside the Monument deck now, which feels a little bit like a Monument slash Vampire deck, honestly, and it's a Mono White deck for the most part, so... Yeah, the card is actually seeing a little bit of play. I don't really think it's going to spike or anything. Again, there's millions of copies out there, but it is what it is. And yeah, we see a little growth this week. Number four, a Johnny Valiant Protector up six cents as well to 458. This is a Planeswalker deck, Planeswalker. So maybe a little surprising that it's on the list. But again, we're looking at an increase of six cents. This probably could have been any card. I will say this about the card, though. Awesome casual card. Great in commander decks. I see it played in a lot of the plus one, plus one commander builds. Number three, Unclaimed Territory. Up seven cents to 232. Well, I've been spending all this time talking about Ixalan cards and all these packs being open and saturating the market. Here's an uncommon from Ixalan going up this week. Even if it's only seven cents percentage-wise, it's a decent increase considering it's a $2.32 card. So what's going on here? Well, this card is part of the Humans deck in Modern, and that is so hot right now. I mean, people trying to build that deck quickly, trying to outrun the spikes and such. So even a uncommon from a new set like Ixalan still gets a tad bit of a bump due to the attention on that deck. Number two, another Planeswalker deck, Planeswalker Liliana Deathwielder, up 12 cents to 594. Again, another great casual card, kind of fun for commander play. I kind of wonder down the road what's going to happen with these things, because over time, even though there's tons of them printed right now, over time, I don't see these particular Planeswalkers having a lot of opportunities to see reprints. So will the day come that maybe many years down the road as new players enter the game and they want to play casual magic and play commander, will there be a higher demand on some of these Planeswalker deck Planeswalkers? I don't know. It's just speculation, but maybe down the road someday you'll see some actual growth behind these cards. Number one, Glint Sleeve Siphoner of 15 cents to 3.33. Now, this is our number one card, only going up 15 cents. It just goes to show you how slow standard is right now, and that's to be expected. We're just in that slow time period. But even so, this is a linchpin card. It's been great throughout the meta. All right, let's move on to the top five modern cards that have lost value this week. We'll see a couple cards here that were reprinted in Iconic Masters. We're not going to talk about Iconic Masters singles in this video because we did a whole video on those yesterday. I'll link that at the end of the video too in case you missed it. But let's get in with number five. Tarmogoyf from Modern Masters 2015 down $1.66 to $70. Now I've said many times on the show that if you're going to buy a Tarmogoyf, I'd probably steer clear of the Modern Masters 2015 one if I'm buying online, sight unseen, because there was a lot of damage involved with some of the cards with shipping and packaging. I remember opening a lot of cards from this particular set and you get frayed edges, you get a lot of cards that were like knocked around, their corners are kind of dented, stuff like that. The foils were really bad. A lot of scratch foils were coming out of the product. So this particular card, it is cheap though. And if you don't care about that stuff, then you know what? If you can find a Tarmogoy for $50, $60, $65, which you might be able to if you shop around, a lot of sellers are trying to just liquidate these things, then wonderful. I mean, pick it up. It's a good deal. Play with it. There's nothing wrong with that. But the card itself, if I could pick up a comparable version from either the first Modern Masters or Modern Masters 2017, I'd probably go in that direction. Number four, Thoughtseize from Lorwyn. This is down $1.89 to $35.54. Now, this was reprinted, of course, in Iconic Masters with that same art as a rare, which is great for players that wanted this art because the Lorwyn version had a lower print run, and those are getting harder and harder to find. At one point before the reprint was announced, the card was going for around 50 even a little more than that, which is pretty crazy when you think about it, considering there's also a Theros version available that was a lot cheaper at the time. So people do, at least a group of people, definitely enjoy this particular art, and they're willing to pay a little more for it, but at least now there's another avenue to get the art on this card at about $15. 
Some will still want the original version, and because of that, this card will hold value for sure, but it will go down some more, I think, between now and then. Number three, Chalice of the Void, down 220 to 7649. This is the Modern Masters version, and both this and the Meriden version were climbing last week, so this is just normal snapback. Number two, Karn Liberated from Modern Masters 2015, down 232 to 6299. Karn's still seeing a ton of play in the Tron decks and different versions of Tron, so don't you worry. Karn's going to be just fine, but at least until he sees a reprint, which he could desperately use, by the way. But uh, the card has been going up, at least in increments over the last few months, so I think this is just snapback. Number one, Horizon Canopy, down 299 to 6598. This is the original version. Of course, this was reprinted in Iconic Masters as a rare as well with new arts and a normal card frame. But that original version, considering, again, it was from Future Sight, which means the print run was pretty low. And with that unique look to the card, a lot of people are going to still want this original version. It's going to maintain a price tag. Now, again, if you don't care about that, you can get the newer version much cheaper. And if you just want to play with the card, that's the way to go. Very popular card in a lot of decks, including the Humans deck. But this card will go down a little more. I wouldn't be surprised to see it maybe within a few weeks to a couple months get down to almost to where it was a year and a half ago or so, around like that $55 mark, perhaps. I don't really see it going below that, honestly. All right, let's move on to the top five modern cards that have gained a value this week. And this list really shows how healthy modern is. Cards from all different decks showing up here. Number five, we'll start off with a little control with Celestial Colonnade. Up 213 to 4438. All of these World Wake creature lands really could use a reprint. This one in particular, though, maybe we'll see it in Masters 25. Great card for Azorius or Jeskai Control and Modern. Number four, Thalia, Guardian of Thraben. Up 234 to 2118. I remember a while back, I think it was like the first year of the channel, we opened a booster box of Japanese language, Dark Ascension. We opened a beautiful foil of this card. I sold it, of course, to support the channel much less than I could probably get for now. But, you know, what can you do? That's the nature of things. This one, though, going up most recently due to its impact in that Humans deck. Again, it's all about that Humans deck. Very hot right now. Now, this card's great in other decks, too, in Vintage, Legacy, and Modern. And you see this in all sorts of variants of Death and Taxes. Just a great card overall. Mox Opal. Two versions here. Modern Masters 2015 up 218 to 6265 with the Scars of Meriden version up 234 to 6435. Now, this card is awesome. Huge part of Affinity, huge part of Lantern Control, and it was sort of going down recently. I wasn't really sure why, quite honestly. Now, granted, Lantern Control maybe was seeing a little bit less play percentage-wise, but Affinity was strong as ever. I mean, doing really well, putting up good results. So, needless to say, though, the card's bouncing back, and I do think it's going to continue to go up until we see a reprint. Number two, Scalding Tarn. Up 241 to 6241, this is the Modern Masters 2017 version of the card, but both this one and the Zendikar version have been very healthy. Right now, the most popular of the enemy colored fetch lands, which can be hard to come by anyway, and it just is the right color combination for the metas are right now in a lot of places, and that includes Vintage Legacy and Modern, a lot of great decks that are looking for these colors. Number one, Tarmogoyf, up 249 to 79, 31 from Modern Masters. What? Tarmogoyf going up? What's happening? So, you know what? I do think this one being maybe one of the more desirable versions because Future Sight can be a little too expensive for some people, even though it's really cool looking. But some folks may prefer this artwork, and if they do, like I said, they could be avoiding the Modern Masters 2015 version. Modern Masters 2017 version is fine. There's no problem with that, but this is a little bit older. So I could see where maybe if you're in the market for buying a Gwaif, you might be looking at this one. Now, the increase I do think will be a little temporary. I do think this will snap back a little bit just because of the disparity in pricing. We just looked at that Modern Masters 2015 one that's much cheaper at this point. So this could be a blip on the radar in the market. But I do want to point out, even though Gwaif has been seeing less percentage play, and I've said that many weeks now, Card's still around. It's like not going anywhere. I mean, you got decks like Obzon, Jund, John Death Shadow, these decks in modern that are going to run it. So, card's not going to disappear. Don't get me wrong, but I do think we'll snap back a little bit. All right, let's move on to the world of legacy. And like I said at the top of the show, a little slower this week. Not a whole lot happening, but let's check in. Number five, the Tabernacle of Pendril Vale, down fifteen ninety seven to a very affordable one thousand four hundred and sixty seven dollars and fifty eight cents. 
Number four, Fork from Unlimited, down 1915 to 4048. This card was going up recently, so it's just kind of snapping back a little bit now. Number three, Mirror Universe, down 2672 to 22495. This card was, I think, really undervalued, and it spiked a little bit. I don't necessarily think it was market manipulation necessarily, but maybe people realizing the card was a little bit undervalued. So some folks picked it up. The card's snapping back a little bit now, but you could argue a price point even around $200 is not bad for this card, honestly, for a long-term pickup. So kind of is what it is. I wouldn't necessarily run out and buy this today. I'd watch it a little bit closer, make sure this isn't market manipulation that's been going on. But if you want to pick up this card, I'd pull the trigger on this one maybe sooner than later. Number two, Plateau from Unlimited, down 3209 to 169.96. It's always good when you see the dual land show back up on these lists because it means everything's kind of calming down because they will tend to move quite frequently as different decks kind of come and go in the meta. And even over time, they just will experience slow growth because they're getting harder and harder to find. So when you see things like this, that means the attention is probably where it should be and not on buyouts. Number one, speaking of buyouts, Serenda be free, down 39.61 to 299.99. Now, this card was a target of a buyout a few weeks back. It spiked really aggressively and then quickly was reintroduced to the market and was going back down. This is not a reserveless card. This card has been reprinted. You can find much cheaper copies of it, but there's still a lot of attraction when it comes to buyouts around Arabian Nights, even when they are not on the reserve list. So kind of is what it is. Last week, we saw this kind of snap back up a little bit. It was declining pretty rapidly, but it went back up, but now it's back on the decline. That could have just been a weird blip in the radar, or they may have slowed down reintroducing them in the market last week. So yeah, this will continue to fall. Okay, let's move on to the top five legacy cards that have gained value this week. Coming in at number five is Raging River, a pretty cool card from Unlimited, up $30.64 to $80. Number four, another good card, so he's play in 93 94 a little bit, The Abyss, of $31.23 to $411.25. Number three, Bayou from Unlimited, up $44.09 to $358.47. Number two, another dual land, this is the Unlimited Underground Sea, up $73.83 to $648.97. Candelabra of Thanos at number one of $86 to $665. Even though this is a big increase, I don't think this is market manipulation. I'll keep an eye on it, but this is a pretty highly played card when it comes to things like the lands deck. So this card will circulate a little bit. And also too, when you're looking at price point six, $700, movement around $86 isn't something too unusual some of the time. So I'll just kind of watch it and maybe we'll see next week what's going on with it. All right, so let's talk about some Silver Border now. And I said at the top of the show, the catalyst for this, of course, being the rules change commander. And very, very quickly, the market was impacted, as you could imagine. A lot of commander players thinking about maybe picking up some cards through the holiday season to play with. And we talked in the other video about the feelings that a lot of players have about this rule change. So I'm not going to go into all that here in the finance video, but... Like I said, if you like to hear more about that, check it out. I'll link it at the end. But let's get into the cards that are spiking. Number five, Old Fogey, up 267 to 408. Now, not a huge increase with this particular one, but percentage-wise, it's not a bad increase, actually. So, yeah, this is a card that a lot of people have been paying attention to ever since Exelon was coming out because this was kind of like the original dinosaur, right? So it's just kind of an interesting card. It's not bad either, a 7-7 seven, seven for 2, even though there are drawbacks there in the rules text. And it's just kind of a fun magic card. Number 4, Jack in the Mox, up 1054 to 1238. Notice this is a roll of six-sided die card. We're going to see another one of these on the list. So there's definitely some correlation between the things coming out in Unstable and some of these older cards. This is a good example of that. And all of these cards, even though there was maybe some movement while we were getting unstable previews and such, these big spikes really happened when the announcement happened within the last 24 to 48 hours. Number three, Johnny Combo Player of 1593 to 1899. Now, Johnny Combo Player is not on the banned list for the Silver Border Commander cards, but it is on the Be Careful list. <laughs> so what better way to draw attention to a card than to put it on the Be Careful list? So, as you can imagine, this card's going up. I mean, great card, very fragile, sure is a 1 1, but you can mana sync tutoring. I mean, that's kind of awesome. And it's legendary, it can be your commander. 
Number two, now I know my ABC is up 2161 to 2265. This is crazy. So this card I actually mentioned in the video yesterday about Commander. I kind of said this isn't a finance video, but pay attention to these cards. Let's look at one of them that's spiking already. This was it. Yesterday at that time, about 24 hours ago, this was at $15-ish, $15, $16. So even since then, it's had a pretty nice spike. Pretty crazy. Strategy, strategy, up 37.93 to 39.99. And another huge increase here. Another roll of six-sided die card. A very high variance card. I love the art on this one, though. Very reminiscent of Wheel of Fortune, of course. And again, I want to say thank you to one of the viewers, Matt Foley, who actually mentioned this card yesterday in the comments of one of the videos and helped me kind of keep track of all this stuff when it was happening. So he's been following along a lot of the silver-bordered stuff, which is pretty cool. So... <laughs> A lot going on, definitely, in that world. Now, before we go, there's one more card I want to show you. Normally, I'm very careful to talk about promos and foils, especially promo foils. But there's a card I wanted to bring to your attention because it was moving a lot. Now, the reason I don't showcase cards like this too often is because price points can be really weird sometimes. Because there's not a lot of these on the marketplace at any given time, and there's not a lot of sales... That leads to maybe some weird ups and downs that could be misleading. So keep that in mind when we look at this card. But it was a silver bordered card that was in foil that I wanted to kind of show you just really quick. It's Grimlock Dinobot Leader up 84.50 to 249.50. And this has happened in the last 24 to 48 hours. This is part of the Hascon set, which you could buy at Hascon or on the Hasbro website if you're lucky and you could catch it. Now, a lot of these cards are being sold in the set. So that's why you're not seeing a lot of data points out there in the market and why I'd say be careful about purchasing this card and just kind of shop around a little bit. Now, if you're interested in the full set, I have seen them out there for 200 to 250 Actually, even 200 I don't think that's a bad price to pay. Like, I don't feel like I'd be ripped off if I sold that set for 200 even though this card is worth a little more than the full set right now, which feels a little counterintuitive. Again, I do think this will snap back, <laughs> so... This is a very aggressive increase, and you don't really see aggressive increases stick, at least not in the short term. So, I mean, $210, $220 is probably a fair price for the full set. But again, just be wary. Shop around a little bit. This is a card, if you're interested in it, that could snap back. Or again, these could be some skewed data points. So just be real careful. But just wanted to point this one out to you. All right, with that being said, that's the Market Watch for this week. Pretty crazy stuff. We'll continue to keep an eye on it and keep you posted. But until next time, hey, thanks for watching. Please remember to like, subscribe. Have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. This video is made possible by the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page as well as our Amazon affiliate store, where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon, and have a great day.